everyone. So in this video, we are going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. It is a tool for right triangle problems only. So take note, Pythagorean theorem is only used for right triangles. So the mathematician behind this Pythagorean theorem is Pythagoras. He was a Greek philosopher who made important developments in mathematics, astronomy, and the theory of music. The theorem known as Pythagoras theorem or Pythagorean theorem was known to the Babylonians 1,000 years earlier, but he may have been the first to prove it. When do I need to use the Pythagorean theorem? When I know length of two sides and when I need to know the length of third side. What is the Pythagorean theorem? So Pythagorean theorem, as I have said a while ago, is only used for right triangles, where A and B are the legs and C is the hypotenuse. So as you can see in the illustration, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So therefore, we have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, which is the Pythagorean theorem. What is a right triangle? So right triangle is a triangle with exactly one right angle. The hypotenuse is always across from the right angle and is always the longest side. The legs are always the two sides that form the right angle and are shorter than the hypotenuse. So these are the legs and this is your hypotenuse. So let us derive some formulae. So formula is the plural form of formula from the Pythagorean theorem. So if from our Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, if one of the legs is missing, so we have a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. And then b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. So take note, if one of the legs is missing, you just need to subtract. But if the hypotenuse is missing, you need to add. So let us look for the length of hypotenuse in this diagram. So to compute for side x, we are going to have 15 squared plus 20 squared is equal to c squared. So in here, 15 squared is equal to 225, then 20 squared is equal to 400. And 225 plus 400 is equal to 625. Then we are going to extract the square root. So c squared, the square root of c squared is c. We are going to cancel the square root sign and the power of 2. And then square root of 625 is 25. So c is equal to 25 or our side x is equal to 25. Now let us have another one. So let us look for the length of the hypotenuse. So to compute for your side x, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem, and it is equal to 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to c squared. 6 squared is equal to 36, and 8 squared is equal to 64. 36 plus 64 is equal to 100, and then we are going to get the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. How about if we are looking for the length of a leg? In here, given one of the legs, and we are going to solve for the other leg. And also given the hypotenuse. So from here, we are going to use a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. So substituting the values, we are going to have 10 squared minus 6 squared. And then 100 minus 36. 100 minus 36 is 64. So getting the square root of 64, it is equal to 8. So therefore, side x is equal to 8. Now let us have another one, looking for length of a leg. So let us compute for side x. To compute for side x, we are going to have c squared minus b squared. And substituting all the values, we have 25 squared minus 15 squared, which is, which is equal to 625 minus 225. 625 minus 225 is 400, and the square root of 400 is 20. Now let us have other examples. In here, we are going to use 
6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to C squared. Then 36 plus 64 is equal to 100. Getting the square root of 100, it is equal to 10. Then how about if one of the legs contain a radical sign? So in here, what we need to do is to use the formula B squared is equal to C squared minus A squared. And then substituting all the values, 12 squared minus 6 squared of 3 to the power of 2. So 12 squared is equal to 144. And then we have 6 squared. We are going to cancel the square root sign, so times 3. 6 squared is equal to 36. Then 36 times 3 is equal to 108. So we have 144 minus 108, which is equal to 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. Now let us have another one. So to solve for C, we have 4 squared plus 12 squared. And then 16 plus 144 is equal to 160. 160 is not a perfect square. So therefore, we are going to factor it where in one factor is a perfect square. So 160 is equal to 16 times 10. And square root of 16 is equal to 4. So we have c is equal to 4 square root of 10. If you want to simplify it further, it is equal to 12.65. Either of the two will do. Now, let us have another one. Solving for b. So b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. In here, we are going to substitute all the values, 18 squared minus 9 squared, and then 18 squared is equal to 324, and 9 squared is equal to 81. 324 minus 81, it is equal to 243. 243 is not a perfect square, so all we need to do is to factor it out, where in one number or one factor is a perfect square. So it is equal to 81 times 3, the square root of 81 is 9, and then uh, just leave 3 behind, so 9 square root of 3. If you want to simplify it further, it is equal to 15.59, but 9 square root of 3 is acceptable already. Now let's move on to Pythagorean triples. So in here, most of the time, at least one of your side lengths in a right triangle will be an irrational number. A Pythagorean triple consists of three integers that fulfill the Pythagorean theorem. So to get C or the third number, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So in here, so A is 3 and B is 4, so our C is equal to 5. Then 6, 8, the next number is 10. A is equal to 9, B is equal to 12, C is equal to 15. So A is equal to 5, B is equal to 12, C is equal to 13. A is equal to 10, B is equal to 24, C is equal to 26. Then if A is equal to 8 and B is equal to 15, C is equal to 17. If A is equal to 7 and B is equal to 24, C is equal to 25. Please don't forget to do your practice. So do exercise 1A in your textbook, pages 7 to 9. So that's all for now. Thank you very much and see you again next time. Bye!